composure. I don't want you guys to make a fool out of yourself. Get your composure. You know, squeeze your earlobes a little bit, maybe. Get your questions ready. We're getting it going, man. Final votes coming in. Final votes coming in. Uh, Avril's highest viewed video on YouTube. It was D. That's what the majority of you are saying, right? Oh, they're ready. They're ready. That's crazy. Girlfriend has 587 million views. So what do we need to go over before we get to this? Um, if you have questions, only way to ask them is if you follow us. And you can do that by clicking the heart on your screen. That's all you got to do. Um, what else? What else? Other than that, ads. Ads. Dude, if you don't subscribe, you're going to get hit with ads. You can actually get a free subscription by linking your Amazon Prime account to your Twitch account. If you do that, free sub, and it's all good. I feel like that's that. that. We're getting situated in the back. Guys, let me know who you are. Let me know where you are. What part of the world you're checking in from? What part of the country you in? What time is it where you are? Shout yourself out, man. I want to know who's here. Oh, Steve, dude. We are watching this. Um, have you guys watched the, the show on Netflix? The um, Something about like the crazy roommate or whatever. You guys been watching that? My girl and I just watched the one. Well, there's like two or three of them. And one of them happened in Orange County. It's next level, dude. I'm trying to find something. Watch that. <laughs> all right. So many people checking in. Um, I'm glad to have you all here. I know we've been on the front page of Twitch. Everybody just, it's, a, it's an energy, man. We're kicking off the, uh, the, the week, right? With positive vibes. Her name is known worldwide. New album. It's out now. The reviews are insane. You know who it is. It's, she's the reason you're here. Avril Lavigne is on the Daily Drip. Let's get her in the show. Come on. Hello. Hello. I bow to you. <laughs> <laughs> How are you? How is life? I'm so good. How are you? I have no complaints. I feel like it's such a it's such an easy question, but like. Obviously, we're here to talk the vibes and the work and everything going on, but I feel like nobody ever just talks about actual life. Like, how is your day going? Are you good? Are you at a good place right now? I feel like you're probably so busy, you might not even have time to think. That has definitely been the case. I've been very busy. I haven't had a lot of time to, like, make phone calls. So yesterday was kind of, like, my catch-up day. I, like, called my mom. I organized my house, folded some clothes got into I'm like a really organized person and I like I need my house and my space to be like really clean so I like kind of went there yesterday and then I binge watched some tv um what are you watching love is blind love is blind I was just telling my girl I gotta get caught up I haven't seen season two and I saw like a clip for the reunion that they did and one of the guys is such an asshole it made me want to watch it just to be mad at him yeah I know. It was crazy. But the, it was like, it's a really good binge watch. What else did I watch? Um, and I'm watching Jailbirds right now, too. I haven't even heard of that. Jail, is that Netflix? Hulu? Yeah, it's Netflix. It's like, um, they go in and it's just like they're filming um, people in jail. You see, yeah, it's kind of crazy. Jailbirds. So, you think, I, I, used to, I used to watch a show called 60 Days In, where they would send, you know, like normal people or whatever in jail for 60 days to see how they would last. How, how, be real, how long could you last in jail? Like, you've seen these shows, you know what it's like. How long do you think you could for real go in there and hold it down for? Uh, it looks, it's like, it looks intense. Like, but I think that's kind of like why it's like, in a way, good that they film it to show people what it's like. Um, right. Obviously, that's not ideal. 
Um, and so like maybe it'll encourage people to, you know, have the option to make better choices. But um, I, what's interesting is I actually just shot a music video for Love It When You Hate Me uh, with Black Bear and Travis, and it's it's in jail. Um, <laughs> except I went to jail for falling in love too many times. Right, right. So we get <laughs> fun. Um, so, yeah, that was interesting. That happened. And we just released the, uh... that video. This album, I mean, it was the debut for Travis's uh, record label. H- how did you originally link with him? Like, what is uh, you found out about it and were reaching out to him and just always been a fan? Has there always been a relationship there? Like, how did it kind of, you know, happen? Yeah, he um, worked on my album, The Best Damn Thing. And and uh, that was, like, 15 years ago. And then I've always been a huge fan. And then we got together to write songs. And, I mean, he's so much more than a drummer. Like, he's a writer, producer, works with tons of different artists, and he has his own label. Time, uh, when I was making the album, I didn't have a label, which was kind of fun. And so, I was like, I can do whatever I want. (laughs) So, um, then, he just, yeah, he signed me, and it's been, yeah, easy, fun. Like, he understands me as an artist. He's like, yeah, yeah, I, so... And good vibes. My I'm album. Gonna, yep. No, go ahead. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm watching the screen in front of me, and it's in like slow motion, and it's like tripping me out. It's like you know when you're talking and there's an echo, and you're like, <laughs> "That's me it's right now." All over the place. Sorry. Yeah. Um, we're, we're, no, it's we're okay. Drugs on the show. <laughs> I'll just like close my eyes and like the focus. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. There you go. There you go. No, what I wanted to ask you, I was going to say, I mean, you've been doing this for a minute, right? I mean, the first album we're celebrating, I mean, complicated. The fact that came out 20 years ago is so crazy. And now you have this new project. I mean, you kind of seen, you know, the industry evolve. What do you think the biggest difference is from releasing the project now to when you first released your project back then? Um, so, yeah, my first record, Let Go, came out... 20 years ago, so this summer will be the 20th anniversary, and Complicated just had its anniversary. Um, The difference is that, like, I made that album during a time where, you know, like, there wasn't, like, streaming and social media and all that stuff. It was, like, uh, my first time making an album, and, like, so I had to really, like, kind of take my time, write my songs, find people that I could click with, because I... That was sort of my mo- most important record. I had to. De- I was so young. I had to develop my sound and style, and I knew in my head I wanted and I wanted to be more guitar driven, but I wanted to rock <laughs> a little more than what what was the trend at the time, which was bubblegum pop. And there's nothing wrong with that. But um, so it took me a long time to make that album, and it was a lot of work. And then now, and I was just just gotten out of high school. So I'm writing from, like, high school experiences. I was, like, I was 16 when I wrote that album. And then now, fast forward to 20 years later, um, still writing about the same shit. <laughs> I make an album called Love Socks. Um, but, you know, it's like, uh, from my perspective as a woman. And, um, yeah, I kind of, like, what I've gone through, what I've seen, what I've experienced in love and learning to like laugh at all the crazy stuff it does to us. I think what's so dope about it is, I mean, you could tell your fan base is very almost like cult like, like they've been rocking with you from the jump. So the cool thing is they've also been able to grow the way you're growing. So now they can still connect with your experiences and it's almost as if they've grown with you. You know what I mean? Yeah. hundred percent. Like, yeah. Like my fan base is like so crazy and passionate and like, like I feel them and um, they're, they're so much fun and I feel so grateful to still be here today and so grateful for their support like 20 years later. I didn't know that L.A. Reid was the one that discovered you. I, I was reading yeah. up on that. And I was like, how, how did that even happen? How does he find out who you are? So I was 15 years old and I went to New York City with my parents and I was going to like like maybe like start writing and like make a demo and I was in a studio 
And he heard I was in town and he swung by the studio and they literally just said, sit down and sing for him. <laughs> and I like oh, sang the song that I wrote called Why, which was a song I wrote about being mad at my mom because that's what I was writing about back then at 15. <laughs> and he signed me on the spot and to Arista Records and um, got me an, a record deal. And working with him was so great. I left high school. Um I sat there and worked with him, and he, like, I told him, like, I want to write songs. This is important to me. And he gave me enough time to go out and to write my music. And because that's someone that young, everyone would have kind of expected, like, okay, uh, we're going to hand her songs. And I was so against that. I was just like, no, no, no. Like, I, I really want to write. So I ha it had to take a long time to, like, do that and to find people and producers that clicked with me and co-writers and so he gave me my freedom totally understood me and was like awesome to work with and yeah la rediscovered me that is so dope I mean, just so iconic you know what i mean like to have that as part of your journey yeah and he's amazing i have so much love for him and like we've over the years like because he was the president of my record company and then you know like labels change like throughout the 20 years of my career and there was like times we didn't work together but like he always was there for me he was always someone I could call he always helped in any way he could and he's just been like always there for me and I have so much love for him there's a, a ton of fans in the chat I want to get to the questions shortly but I, I obviously want to talk about the album and kind of have you break down a few of the songs um if you don't mind mm. so I didn't know what to expect going into it right we're like all right first album travis is a part of this you know it's been a minute what's the energy going to be like and you come out the gate i mean cannonball is chris as soon as it starts just like oh shit like you're hooked immediately and i feel like the energy is just so dope it, like for me i had like it was almost like a nostalgic reaction but it sounds so current and now it's like the perfect blend if that makes any sense to you <laughs> well that's a huge compliment thank you and, um, yeah, like, uh, <laughs> I'm happy to hear that because, yeah, Cannonball is, like, this, like, feisty, like, manic, like, crazy, like, kind of pop punk song and, like, opening the album with that. That's how I, like, went into making this album. Like, I was just, like, no holding back. I just want to make a rock record. Um, that album is like a reflection of the vibe that we had in the studio and we had so much great energy from like the second that we all started and i feel like it really shows i uh, i've known mgk for years he's a friend of the show and obviously he's been killing it and you guys collab for boys lie a lot of people in the chat are asking if that's going to be a single by the way so you can answer that but what was the uh what was that vibe like like you guys just you know recording that song together yeah, I mean, that's so, my album Love Sucks has, like, uh, three features on it, Machine Gun Kelly, Black Bear, and Mark Hoppus uh, from Blink, and my single right now, Love It When You Hate Me, is featuring Black Bear, and then the next single will be Boys Lie, um, featuring oh. Machine Gun Kelly, and he's amazing, I love working with him, he's so cool, uh, he has, like, he's, the, he's so creative on so many different levels, and, um, yeah, like we're talking about our video now. We're like creating the treatment for it. And when he came into the studio, it was just like easy and fun. I mean, he just sat down with the guitar and brought up, brought in the voice like concept to me. And we finished writing it together. That's awesome. I, are you, um, are you very, like, like when it comes to being in a studio, do you like a ton of people around you? Do you like it kind of stripped down just you and maybe one other person, a producer? Or like, what is your actual, like, studio vibe like? No, I don't like a lot of people. I think that, like, I kind of, like, it's serious. Like, when I go in, I'm focused. I'm, like, I'm there to work. I have an idea. I want to get it, record it, get it down. And, like, I'm very sick focused. And so whoever's in the room and there is really just, I'm working with on the song and like I used to have like albums where I'd like go in and just like rage and party and make records I did it, this album was not like that at all it was like I'd like wake up get in the car go there start at noon like no drinking <laughs> oh, very wow. <laughs> eating veggies and almonds and <laughs> drinking tea and like um 
and now it's time. Now it's time to have fun and and bring the songs like live and have all our friends come out to the shows and and all that. But yeah, it's been so great working with Kells. You'll see. Um, there's we're going to be working on more cool stuff soon that you guys will hear about. And it's been amazing reconnecting with Travis and um, just to have like all these cool collaborators on the album and everyone's like energy and vibe. I felt like I was hanging out with all my friends. Right. Well, I think that's why people like the music too. That's what it feels like. It feels like, again, because they've been growing with you, they feel like they know you. And now you're, it's almost like they're invited to your personal, you know, party, if you will. <laughs> For sure. <laughs> um, Dare to Love Me, I feel like very vulnerable song, beautiful song. Was it tough to write? Did you co-write this? Break that experience down for me. Um, no, Dare to Love Me, I wrote on my own. I, I just got like a new piano at my house. That was the first song that I wrote on it. While I was making this album, that was like more of a rock, feisty album. Um I wrote this song and it was just kind of about, you know, I went, in, I went into this album in the headspace of just like really, um, my walls were up and I was like feeling very jaded and burnt out on love. And this was a moment in my life where it was like, okay, you know, um, I got, I got a new boyfriend and it was like, okay, like, am I going to do this or not? Like, and I'm going to have to like be open and vulnerable and like let somebody back in. And that was something that was like really hard for me to do. And, um, that's my song, Dare, Dare to Love Me. Um, and so I wasn't intending to put it on the record because it's a stripped down ballad on the piano. It's like a different tone. Um, but when all my producers heard it, they encouraged me to put it on the album felt that it was important to also show that side of me no for sure i mean because everybody's going through it at one point or another so you know you, it's just another way for them to connect with you yeah for sure my mom texted me when the album came out and she's like i love dare to love me and i'm like of course you do <laughs> <laughs> for you i mean Maybe you can share it because, again, like I said, somebody at any point, everybody at any point is going through this and trying to, you know, they, they go through a bad breakup or whatever, and then they, they build their walls so high. Sometimes people set themselves up for failure and miss out on really good opportunities. What was it for you to kind of bring those walls down and allow yourself to, you know, try another take it love? Like, I definitely had just gotten out of, like, um, I'd gone through a breakup and I was like, I need like a break and I need a minute. And then honestly, that's just how I felt. And then I started writing, I wrote the song called love sucks. And then literally like a couple days later, like I had a new boyfriend basically. <laughs> so it didn't last that long, but I like that. I had a moment of, okay, like I sold my house. Like I moved, I moved to a, an, I moved to Malibu, got a house, was starting like my own life for me. And, like, I really was just, like, I'm going to focus on myself. And I think something about that was, something about that process was good for me. Like, you know, I just want to, like, I can rely, I want to rely on my, I'm the person I can rely on the most. Like, and just, I wanted to take care of myself and my heart. But, like, at the same time, you know what? Like, someone was brought into my life, and it was, like, fun. And I was, like, I'm not going to use my head. I'm just going to follow my heart right now. And sometimes you have to do that. 100%. You glow when you talk about it. So it's, it's a beautiful thing. <laughs> uh, the, the chat's going crazy right now. So let's go ahead and get to some fan questions. Um, this one, we'll start with Mr. Abstract Wolfie. He said, can I please get a shout out for my amazing fiance? She's the most incredible partner and mom to our girls. She's a massive Avril fan from 2002. And I would love to see the look on her face if Avril was to say happy birthday to 80. We're from the UK. Uh, 80, happy birthday. I hope you have the most magical year. Um, Avril, where's it at? Avril Portugal says, where do you draw inspiration from the most? I mean, I guess it's pretty obvious. A lot of the, the majority of the inspiration comes from, like, uh, uh, relationships and my experience in them. <laughs> Uh, let's see. There's 
so many coming in. This thing's moving fast. Um, what is one of the proudest moments of your life slash career? Like, I feel like just as a whole, I'm proud of it all. Um, all the songs that I've written, all the tours that I've done. I'm completing a tour. Tours are, are very long, and, and it's like a lot of, it's a big commitment. So anytime I'm finished with a tour, that's like um, a big moment of feeling proud um, and releasing new music, writing songs, all of it, um, just as a, in general as a whole. Uh, here's one from Lilia the Loser. She said, what was your favorite music video slash song to record? Well, I'd say Girlfriend was pretty fun. It was a very long shoot. It was two days. And just because I got to act, I was a preppy girl. Oh, wait, hang on. I had red hair. and then I, had, I was like, I got to like put wigs on and like do some acting. So that that was really fun for me. And complicated was my first video, and I got to crash them all and just like, run around and like pull a bunch of pranks, and that was fun. Um, still talking to music. This is a good question from Adri. It says, uh, "What is the most difficult song you have done?" I assume like difficult, most difficult song to write. Um, I think like any type of breakup song if it's like fresh at the moment is like coming out of a relationship can, can be hard um, to write. So some of the ballads are like the more like emotional stuff where I have to like just kind of go there, but also it's very cathartic and it like feels good. And it's how I like can deal with my emotions and like find peace in the situation. 100%. Um, let's see. Let's see. That 613 official wants to know, will you go back to wearing ties? Um, I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe, like, it'd be cute if, like, on the actual 20th anniversary for Let Go, the first album, I think it'd be cool to do some type of, like, go back, like, photo shoot. Maybe. Um, this question says, what do you think about collectors of items related to you? They said that they're a collector and they have more than 1,000 international magazine covers, 200 edition of CDs, 3,000 posters, and you even sign a guitar uh, for her. So I guess, yeah, just what are your thoughts of people that collect all of your, you know, items? That's so cool. I get it. Like, like I love physical CDs. And when I first came out onto the music scene, that was a time where people were buying physical CDs. They would take posters and put them up in their room um, and read up on an artist because we didn't have like the internet available to us and social media to stay up to speed on musicians. So I'm a little old school and like I love physical CDs. So like people who collect um, any of that stuff, like on me, I think that's dope. Also, hey, it's like vintage now. <laughs> like, how cool is that? <laughs> any of the merch t-shirts from any of my concerts, like, yeah, that's like a vibe. That's so dope. It's, uh, it's so crazy to think, like, when you just said, you know, we didn't really have social media back then. I was just having that conversation with my girl. Like, it's so weird to think about. We went through a time where, like, cell phones, you could literally just call, you know what I mean? Or even, like, beepers and internet you had to use aol cds like isn't it so crazy how far we've come in such i mean technically a short amount of time it's so funny because i was saying to mod the other day i feel like i skipped out on the in-between from cds to like streaming now like spotify and stuff the what was it called the i the i what was the thing you put the music on iPod. ipod or the i touch there was a couple different ones. I didn't, I didn't really do that because that was so hard going from like physical CDs, just having CDs and putting them in your car and like whatever, your disc man. Like I would travel with my disc man still. And that, like downloading music and then connecting it and having it go into this, what's it called again? <laughs> iPod. <laughs> like I just never, I, I literally skipped the iPod. And now it's like streaming so it's easier. It's like, um, like it's on your phone and it's there and you don't have to like you don't lose it like you have your phone with you all the time so it's been an it's been interesting like 
uh, it all changing like that. Oh my God. Do you remember tapes? Like I said, oh, I had tape. what, was your, what was your first one? Do you remember? I mean, it was stuff like the Beatles and like I had a Shania Twain CD. I had like, um, like Beatles, Beach Boys, Mamas and the Papas, stuff like that. And then like my first CDs were like Blink-182 and like Matchbox 20, Goo Goo Dolls, Alanis Morissette. And like I still for sure have all of my CDs. Um, the I other day I was... I don't yeah. know where any of my other- I used to have like a big thick CD book that was like this big with just pages and pages. And I don't know what happened to it, but I used to love that thing. It was like like gold back then. I know. I still have all my stuff for sure. I also still have all of my outfits, all of my outfits from all of my music videos. Everything is archived. I have all of my uh, magazine covers from over the years. So we collected everything wow. and it's in like storage like fireproof waterproof like stored away every magazine um cover article like and even back when i did my photo shoot every music video outfit but when i did my photo shoot for my first couple albums it was film and so we would get the negatives and then they'd give you the like thing so you could see it and i have all that stuff still yeah i keep everything and I have all of my CDs. You had mentioned Alanis Morissette. And I just saw a question pop in the chat if you would ever collab with her. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I've joined, I t- naturally, I've joined her on stage before. I think it was her, like, Jay Lopez anniversary um, at House of Blues in Los Angeles. And that was, that was like, a, a highlight of a really cool moment in my career, jumping up on stage and performing with her. Somebody that I really respect. I saw this question in the chat and I was going to ask it. You kind of just somewhat answered it. It's from Kaylee Loves Avril. It says, been a huge fan uh, since Complicated. I love you so much. And I have to ask, what is one of your best memories on tour? Honestly, it's like, obviously all the shows are fun. But like when the show is over, it's like, shower throw on a onesie we have after show food and you just like get on the tour bus and drive and just like driving and like hey show's over and like sometimes like my band bus like i would go party on the band bus and then for a couple hours and then our buses would drive together and then they pull over and then i get back on my bus just like fun like after shows sometimes like i'd have like a day off so we'd take like the tour bus to a campground like an rv spot and like have a fire campfire and barbecue on my days off so like touring is fun i grew up camping so i love to camp and um it's glamping yeah (laughs) i've never even been normal camping i I like glamping i feel like i could kind of do but like just sleeping on rocks (laughs) and shit just not sound appealing (laughs) dude like straight up so i have a ford raptor like i have a truck right now and i took it camping when I first got it, like, I got it, like, two years ago, I took it camping. I got one of those tents that goes in the back of the truck, and um, I should always slept in the back of the truck in a, in a tent. <laughs> oh, wow. You're more adventurous than me. <laughs> I tell you that. <laughs> like, for, um, if it was, like, my birthday, if someone was like, what do you want for your birthday, I'd be like, take me camping. Like, there you go. That's my idea. Mod's taking, fun. No, Mod's taking notes right now. He's like, oh, there we go. That's, that's an idea. <laughs> I don't know how much you would like that. <laughs> <laughs> um, we'll, we'll close it with this. I could talk to you forever. I, I know we got to wrap things up. I, I'll, this is a very, I feel like kind of an easy question, but I ask everybody because everyone has a different answer. I was in therapy a few weeks ago and my therapist asked me, what do you feel is one thing you could work on to become a better version of yourself? And I liked it because it was just kind of me taking a second to, not think about anybody else and just really focus on me and just kind of analyze. And so for me, it was not making people now pay for other people's mistakes in the past, like not being triggered or carrying that baggage into new situations. And so that's something I'm working on. So for you personally, what do you think is one thing you could work on to just become a better version of yourself for you? I think I am the better version of myself now, like, especially when it comes to being, in, in a relationship it's talking 
it's communicating. It's not holding stuff in. It's being like, okay, this and this and this bother me. Like, instead of just holding it in, like, talk about it, like, work through it. I think before, like, I didn't really talk about things so talking and you have to like continue to talk the whole way through and it's like it's not just like oh one thing's like done and better it's like if you're gonna have like a long relationship um you know you have to talk the entire relationship exactly and, like, Communication is key. yeah for sure well damn today was fun it flew by i can't believe we've been here 30 minutes already not only talking talking and listening a hundred percent that's it. I love that. I lo- and it, just your initial response was so great. I hope somebody takes that. I am the better version of myself because you've been working and it shows. <laughs> That's awesome. Well, thank you uh, again for the time, guys. The album is out now. The tour is on the way. Is there anything uh, that we didn't talk about today that you want to touch on before we uh, get out of here? Um, no, just really stoked on the new album. Super grateful for like my fans that have still been ar- around all these years, and really happy to be here. Twentieth um, anniversary this year, so I'm excited to do that. W- walk a Hall of Fame, getting a star, celebrating that, and um, going on tour this year. We have tour dates um, that we're announcing very soon. There it is. Avril Levine, thank you so much for the time. Congrats on everything. And uh, cheers to a million more years of success for you. Thank you so much. Have a good day. Bye. Nice hanging out. Bye.